And so somebody tell somebody that he is still on time. Even though he has delayed, but he is still on time. Very soon and very soon, you will hear and you will know that he is still on time. As a matter of fact, if you are going to a place for a mission, it is not a matter of the time you get there, but it is a matter of you accomplishing the purpose of which you are going. That's right. That's right. Say that again. Amen. So Jesus knew the purpose he was, the purpose, the reason why he was going there. Yes. So listen. But even now, I know that whatever you ask, God would give you. Amen. This woman, even though she's so disappointed, and she's at this time weeping in tears, but she also has some kind of faith that this man has done a lot. We've seen him perform so much. That even though he's delayed, he's not here, he's not been here on time. And our brother has been dead, he's been buried for four good days. The Bible says that he's tank at that time. He's too late. But on the other side, he said, but even now, whatever you ask of the Father, I know he will give you. How many times? Haven't the men of God advised you? How many times have to encourage you that trust in the Lord? Be patient unto the Lord. Wait for God's own time. Wait for the appointed time. The Bible said in Habakkuk that even though the vision tarries, wait for it. It shall not tarry. It shall come to pass at the appointed time. What is that appointed time in your life? Jesus' time is different from your time. So the time that you are describing him to be late, Oh, he's far ahead. Hallelujah. Time will not permit me to share with you the magicians who decided to plan to have a competition together. And so one of them, he knew that he was so powerful. This is a story that happened in Ghana. Probably some of you might have heard about it. That they, one of them, Professor Hindu or whatever they called him at that time, the, the, the story says that he intentionally delayed. So that when the, the other magicians met, they all performed and did all they could do and gave the honor to one of them. Just as they were walking out from the podium, from, from the auditorium, the story said, Hindu appeared. And when they asked him, what are you doing? We, we gave ourselves, let's say, 12 o'clock, and it's already 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock, is, 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 is the time is far overdue. What, why are you here? He said, what are you talking about? Look at your times. What time is it? What time did we set for? They said 12 o'clock, but look at the time. They said, he also said, look at your times. They all looked at their times. And you know what? Every single time around the neighborhood was exactly 12 o'clock. <laughs> so they said that this is marvelous. We take the honor from the winner and give it to you. Somebody put your hands to the glory of Jesus Christ. That is what Jesus does in our lives. Even though he tallies, even though he's delayed, but he is still on time. Hallelujah. So Jesus said, show me the place. And quickly, they went to show him the place. The Bible says that before he even got to the tomb, the other sister Mary also appeared, verse 33, if you are there with me. Just jump to the B part and let's look at something from there. Jesus was deeply in spirit and troubled. Bible says that as soon as Martha also had had conversation with Jesus Christ, she, she ran to, to call the sister Mary that the teacher is here. So Mary also quickly went out to meet the Lord. The Bible says that she broke into tears. Why have you done this to us? What did we do wrong? In the year 2014, what have we done wrong? Haven't we served the Lord with all our hearts, with our tithes, our times? The choir rehearsals, the, 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 the singing ministration, the drumming, the, the, the organ, all that we've been putting in God. Why? Why? We keep asking ourselves, God, why me? Why me? So Mary broke into tears. And this is the first scripture I believe many of us learned when we were kids, right? Yes. Yes. 
God bless you all. Hallelujah. <laughs> so as soon as Jesus saw Mary crying in tears like that, the Bible says that Jesus was moved. No, 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 you, 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 you're rushing too much. Hallelujah. Go to the verse 33 first. Take your time whenever you read in scripture. Don't jump to the very first verses that people have been reciting and you are so conversant with. Sometimes the revelation is not at that part. Amen. Jesus wept and so what? You want to ask yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the revelation is here. Listen to this. Verse 33b. Jesus was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Seeing Mary crying like that. He was deeply moved in spirit and he was troubled. And that is where the Bible says that he couldn't contain himself. Because remember he was a man and a God at the same time. Amen. So he had that man feeling. So he also wept. And that is where Jesus wept. Hallelujah. But listen. Tonight, because of your cry, because you've been crying for so far too long, because in the year 2014, you were crying too much. Yes, yes. You are moving Jesus, the spirit of Jesus. Yes. Jesus is getting troubled about you. Thank you. And when, whenever Jesus is troubled about you, oh my goodness, yes. he can contain himself. He has to do something special. He has to do something special. Tonight, if you will cry, tonight, if you will weep, before the Lord Jesus, you will move the spirit of the Lord. You will make Jesus troubled and he can contain himself. But he has to move and do something about your life. So in verse 39, Jesus has got into the tomb. They say he's, he, he, he's been over four days, he stinks. He said, show me where he was buried. Yes. So as soon as he got there, remember Mary, Martha has already said to him that whatever you ask the Lord, even though it's been four days, right. your God will give you. Hallelujah. So Jesus is going to ask the Father something. Yes. Let's listen. So in verse 39, Jesus got there and saw that there was a big stone rolled onto the tomb. It was a culture in the Jews that whenever they bury somebody in a cave, in a tomb like that, they have to also roll a big stone. I don't know for some, what, what reason they were doing that, whether it's to prevent the ghost from coming out or what. You are dead and you are buried, you've been put in a cave, but they will still roll a big stone. They did that to Jesus, isn't it? But we serve a living God, beloved, that stone is nothing to him. Hallelujah. No matter the size of the stone, it is nothing to him. Bible tells me that when he woke up, when he resurrected, by the mere word, spoken word of him, the stone was rolled away. Before that had happened, before he did that, some, something similar had happened in the tomb of Lazarus. There has been a stone in your life. The demons have put you in some sort of cave. In the year 2014, they buried you. They put you in a cave. And they also rolled a stone in there. Asantikasa nobekasa wabu asabra usu. Wabu pa wasu usu ya masinyabu biya mensu. That is what the devil does to us. So Jesus told them something. Take away that stone. Tonight all that Jesus is telling you. That he's about to do something in your life. He is about to do something great in your life. Something spectacular is about to happen in your life. But if you take away that stone. What is that stone we are talking about? It could be a stone of anxiety. It could be a stone of bitterness. A stone of envy.